What's good guys? We're back with another review video. This time we're reviewing the Hercules DJ Control Impulse T7. Stay tuned. So you know the dealio. If you haven't been to this channel yet, you haven't seen my face yet, please make sure to subscribe and like this video so I can keep making videos like these for you guys, all right? All right, let's get right into the review. So the T7 is Hercules' first motorized two-channel DJ controller. Now I can say that this is an entry-level controller. A couple of dead giveaways that I found myself that it came with a free download of Serato DJ Lite. Now, Serato DJ Lite is very limited with its effects and uses, but you can upgrade technically to Serato DJ Pro for a fee, right? So that's a dead giveaway. Another is that it has a beginner beat match guide where it shows you how to beat match and stuff, which is amazing for beginners, right? So another kind of dead giveaway right there. On the back, it doesn't come with any booth outs. It comes with one mic output, but usually pro controllers come with two, at least one XLR or one quarter inch. This one had just one quarter inch. So a couple of dead giveaways right there. Now, in addition to downloading the option of Serato DJ Lite, it also comes with Hercules' native software, Juiced. Now I downloaded Juiced just to try it out and it started up right away no problems at all so in addition to hercules trying to help you how to beat match for the beginners on the actual controller in the juice software there's a library of tutorials for beginners to learn how to beat match and uh, learn how to dj themselves so amazing great value the t7 has dedicated stem buttons which you do not see in entry-level controllers. So that's a plus. So the T7 uses a belt-driven technology, which is literally a glorified rubber band that helps rotate the moving platters. Now I know some turntable heads will think that belt-driven technology is kind of a step back, that on startup, it takes a while to, to rev up to speed. But honestly, after playing with this machine for a few weeks now, it starts up right away. There's no delay at all. So it's really good on that front, honestly. Now the build quality is something that you would expect from an entry level controller, but it is built quite well. It has handles on the side for easy transport and it only comes in at 11 pounds. So it's really, really light. I was also pleasantly surprised to see that it had XLR outs on the back because usually entry-level controllers only have RCA outs. Now the T7 does have effects paddles, sweet effects paddles. Although it doesn't have hardware effects, you are free to use software effects. And if you're using Serato software effects, you're in good hands. Now this system is geared more toward the beginner turntablist who wants to get into scratching and doing tricks and stuff, but pros don't count this out. It's an excellent controller. Now if you've been on vinyl and stuff and you're used to that, you'll be right at home with this. Scratching on it is like butter. You can upgrade the cross fader and the channel faders. I think it's InnoFader upgrade, but honestly, it's an amazing controller and it's the most value controller that you can get on the market today. It's $700 US and $1,000 Canadian. Now, if you want a controller with spinning platters, it's a fraction of the cost what you'd pay for a Rain 1 or a Rev 7. Yeah, yeah. All right, now let's get a closer look. So just looking at the front of the Hercules Impulse T7, we have nothing much other than these headphone outs, which are a quarter inch and headphone jack, so one eighth inch. But that's pretty much it. Now on the back, we have 
XLR outs, left and right, very nice. We have RCA master outs. We have a mic in, which is a quarter inch. We have the USB power button on and off. And of course, for the AC adapter. So one other standout feature that I like on the Impulse 7 is that there's feet that you can actually pull under, pop out. This side too, you can pop it out. And then on these sides, you can have it pop out. Cool, so it's much higher in case you have it on a table flat. It'll avoid spillages. You can run your cables right under so you can have a cleaner setup. Really nice. All right, another thing I found cool on this system is, check out this. When it hits red, it means it's on the one of the actual song, right? One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Which is cool, right? Cool for beginners. All right, guys. So we're now gonna talk about the buttons and all the functions here real quick. Starting off with the motorized platters, these seven inch motorized platters. Uh, keep in mind they are belt driven, so they do not move freely. They will always be under the resistance of that belt under there. All right, so it's the same size as the Rain 1 and the Rev 7 as well. Nice, nice resistance so you can scratch. Pretty heavy too as well. Same on the other side. Now we're gonna go down to these uh, pads. We have the stop, play, cue buttons. We have the shift button right here, sync button. Now we have these nice RGB colored pads right here for your hot cues. Now you have different modes as well. Um, there are up to eight modes depending on what software you're using. Here you have your auto loop. To use your auto loop, you just press it. You can make the loop bigger or smaller, right? You have your ins and your out here. You can do it manually. Now this is the stem function. If you press this button, it'll take away the vocal. So you'll be stuck with just the instrumental and you have uh, the vocal button and you'll, it'll take away pretty much your instrumental and it'll be stuck with the, that's the vocal. So awesome, awesome. Um, we have the parameters here so you can uh, speed up the track or slow down the track if you won't need to catch up to the other deck without having to nudge it. You have the crossfader here. Now it's not very loose but you can get away with cutting. It's, it's actually not too bad but it's not great right you have the volume faders as well which have a lot of resistance as well yeah but keep in mind you can always upgrade this section i think you can upgrade to inno fader as well now here is the mix mode you have modes for the cross fader you can go to scratch mode right here so it'll sharp cuts right here and then you can go to mix mode so it'll blend from one track to the other Okay, on top of that is the beat match guide. Now this is for beginners. Now if you're playing a track and you wanna catch up to the other track, the red light's telling you that you need to slow it down to catch up to the other track. So you go slow it down and then once you hit, once it goes away, there. That means you're caught up with the other side. Okay, so pretty cool for beginners. It's a, it's a good guide. Once you get the hang of it, you can also always turn that off for pros and beginners alike. So very user friendly. Now we have the headphones right here. You can listen to the headphones depending on which one you wanna to listen to. You have the effects paddles right here, engage it and then temporary you have six effects right here software effects uh, they're not hardware effects so that's that's the downside we have the depth button right here for the effects you can go plus and minus we have the filter buttons which are nice and beefy and feel really really nice good quality great resistance uh, for the filter high pass and low pass we have three band eqs for both channels as well feel really nice as well. We have the gains at the top. We have the master right here and the mic volume right here. Now, of course, you have your main mix right here and then you have your volume, but, uh, volume knob for your headphones right here as well. 
So, yeah, and then we have this 10 centimeter tempo slider, which is great for a beginner controller. Usually they're a lot smaller. I'm glad they made it a little bit bigger. Um, the range buttons, so you can change it from eight, 16, and 50, if you press this button. Now, if you wanna back out of your crates, there's that button right here. Again, alternatively, you can use this as well uh, to load songs, load in and out, and you have your assist prep button right here. So that's pretty much all the functions and buttons on the Hercules Impulse T7. Now, I like to test out all the products that I review. So I took this out at a wedding to see how it would do. And let's take a look. So what'd you guys think? Not bad, huh? I killed that gig, honestly. <laughs> Thanks to this guy. Now, there's a lot to love about this controller. I love it. Spinning platters, very responsive. The pads are really responsive. I love the, the stems buttons. Those are clutch. A few things that maybe they could fix on, well, honestly, the, the belt, they're saying that it's going to fail and crack and just fall apart on you. I'm like, yeah, right. I don't think so, man. Other than that, the crossfader is, you can cut on it, but it's not great. But then again, you can upgrade it to InnoFaders. You can change this whole thing. And actually, there's a new um, Impulse T7. It's called the Premium right now. So check that out. It's gold in the in the middle right here so that's cool i think it's an extra hundred dollars so eight hundred dollars now and it actually comes with a case now to a soft case so even better yeah that's it i recommend this controller 100 percent it's for pros and amateurs alike beginners people who want to get into turntablism right so this is perfect for you hope you guys like this review make sure to subscribe and like down below so I can keep making videos for you guys, all right? This is DJ9. See you guys next time.